Hello everyone, my name is Dan and I will be your design journey art class expert for drawing in perspective. I am an artist on YouTube and I've always had a passion for creating and so drawing has always been a means for me to do that. I mostly specialise in pencil drawing. Pencils were something that were easily available when I was younger so I'd pick them up and draw with them and that's something that I've just carried on doing throughout my life and over the years that I've been on YouTube my interests have changed in regards to art and so my artwork has evolved as well. I used to mostly focus on realistic drawing but recently in the last few years I've been covering a lot of perspective drawing as I've been involving myself more into the subject of architecture and these are two aspects of drawing that we are going to be covering throughout these sessions perspective drawing with the involvement of realistic drawing. Both of which can often seem overwhelming, but do not worry because I will walk you through the basics and teach you everything you need to know to start drawing in perspective. It's a subject that anyone can learn. I hear a lot of people say that being good at drawing is a natural talent, but from my own experience, I've come to realize that anyone can learn how to draw. And I know how challenging learning to draw can be, but remember that learning to draw is a process which should be enjoyed. So I encourage you to stay open-minded throughout these sessions as we jump into perspective drawing, a subject that can often seem overly complex and at times overwhelming. I'll do my best to simplify the subject. To be able to follow along with these sessions, you will need a pack of pencils, preferably like a pack that I have here where you have a selection of pencil grades. I'll explain pencil grades in a later session. What's even better is you get a free sharpener and an eraser. You'll also need a ruler and of course some paper to draw on because you won't get very far if you don't have any paper and that's all you need. So I hope you are excited and looking forward to progressing through these sessions. Let's get started with a brief introduction to perspective drawing. I want to start by answering the question, what is perspective drawing? You've likely heard of it before, but if you are a beginner, you might not know what it is. Perspective drawing is a technique that is used to represent three-dimensional images on a two-dimensional picture plane, like our paper here. It allows us to create a realistic sense of space. It's an art fundamental that is necessary when it comes to drawing, and it's hard to imagine that there was a point in time when perspective didn't even exist. Artists back then would really struggle to depict the three-dimensional world in their art. Their art would often appear distorted or flat, but eventually a man named Filippo Brunelleschi came along and conducted an experiment which led to the discovery of linear perspective. He realised that all parallel lines would converge to a single point. The subject of perspective has been studied and developed by many artists and now here we are learning the subject throughout this design journey art class. So now let's begin by answering the question, what is involved in perspective drawing? Now, whenever I start a drawing in perspective, I begin by establishing the position of the horizon line. The horizon line is one continuous line that crosses our drawing surface. This isn't just an ordinary line though. The horizon line is our eye level. And so the horizon line and our eye level are both the same thing. It delineates that separation between the sky and the ground plane. Perhaps the best way to explain the horizon line is to look at a real life example. Remember that perspective drawing is a means of creating a realistic sense of space, so it's no surprise that the horizon line is something that is present in real life as well. For example, if you were in the middle of a desert and there was nothing around you, you would see something like this. This is the horizon line and this line is always present. Even if we were in a dense jungle, the horizon line would still be there, it is just obstructed by trees and foliage. So remember that the horizon line is always present and always at eye level, which means if we were to change our eye level by laying down on the ground or standing on top of a tall building, it means the horizon line would raise and lower as well. So how does this apply to drawing? Well, here I have my horizon line across the centre of the page, and because it is also my eye level, anything below this line I will be looking down on, and anything above I will be looking up at. 
So I hope that explains the horizon line and if you are still confused then don't worry, just try to bear with me because I'm sure that it will all start to make a bit more sense when we start creating some more examples. So I'm only a few minutes in and I've drawn one line but <laughs> there's a lot to explain. So now I'm going to explain something that is necessary to create a drawing which are vanishing points. Vanishing points are points of convergence. Remember when I said that Brunelleschi realised that all parallel lines converge to a single point? Well that point would be the vanishing point. What is important to remember when it comes to vanishing points is that they always exist on the horizon line and all of the parallel lines in your drawing will be directed towards it. Again, let's look at some real life examples. This image here is in one point's perspective. How do I know that? Well, I can see that all of these lines that would be parallel are heading to one point on the horizon line. Here is another image, but this time it is in two points perspective because there are two vanishing points and I can find these by extending what would be parallel lines in the image until they meet at the horizon line. This here is an image in three points perspective and again, I find these vanishing points the same way Except here the third vanishing point is far off the page and also not on the horizon line. I know I just said that all vanishing points exist on the horizon line, which is true, but I'll explain why this third vanishing point is an exception later. So I am aware that that is a lot to take in, but do not worry too much because I'm sure a lot of your questions will be answered as we start to look at these principles more in depth. Now as we progress through these sessions, we'll be creating many example drawings and applying what we learn. So now that you have a basic understanding of the horizon line and vanishing points, it's time to start drawing. So as I said earlier, we want to start with the horizon line, and here this is across the bottom of the page. Remember this is also our eye level, so this means that I will be seeing what I draw from below if it is above this line. This drawing is going to be in one point perspective, and this vanishing point is going to be in the centre of our horizon line. Now what I'm going to do is take my ruler and draw out some guidelines to help make each of the letters of this text line up. The next step is to decide on what you want to write. I'm going to be writing Design Journey, but you are the artist here, so feel free to write anything you want and make it your own. You can also experiment here and block out this text in any style you want. At this point, we do not need to worry about perspective, we are just drawing out some text like this, and this can be tricky to get right. You know, drawing out text like this isn't easy, but it's a simple example to start with before we move on to drawing everything else in the later sessions. So once you have your text drawn out like so, we can start making use of our vanishing point and add some three dimensional depth to this text. Remember that all parallel lines converge to a vanishing point, so what I will do here is take some lines from each corner of the letters in this text to that vanishing point. So I will use my ruler and draw some lines from each individual letter to that vanishing point. I have two lines of text here as well, so I will also do the same on the text above, but I don't have to worry about it too much because we won't see the bottom of it because this line of text is below it. Now I have a selection of lines heading to our vanishing point here, and now I need to decide on the depth of my text. Again, this is up to you to decide, you can make your text as long as you like. Here I will draw my line around here as I think this looks good. You don't want your text to be too long as it might look a little bit distorted but maybe that's what you are going for. Also notice that because the horizon line here is below our text it means that we are looking up at it. Here the vanishing point is in the centre and so our lines are converging to that point. So now that you have constructed some three dimensional text in one point perspective, you can start to decorate it as you please. At this point you are free to unleash your creativity and develop this outline. Or you could just leave it like this. 
And so there we have it. Here is some three dimensional text drawn in one point perspective. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction. And if you did follow along and create your own text like this, then be sure to share it over on Instagram using the hashtag MyDesignJourney. And also tag me as well at DanBeershaw because I want to see what you create. These sessions are all about getting you creating. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.